Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. <clears throat> this is your Fulham Manchester United preview. Wednesday night, quarter past eight, kickoff at Craven Cottage. Now, Manchester United should win this game easy. Fulham are relegation fodder. They are sitting 18th. Probably Fulham are going to go back down. Fulham's current manager is Scott Parker. He's been Fulham manager now for around 20 months. I know a few of their players. Obviously one of Fulham's key players is Luckman. They've also got that Mitrovic. Um, he's recently been out with injury. They've also got that Kamara. They've also got that Cavalero. Uh, Robinson, they've got him, um, he's suspended for this game. Uh, they've also got Reed. I think he's also suspended. They've got Ruben Loftus-Cheek, they've got him on loan from Chelsea. They've also got that Tom Kearney. Um he's currently out with injury until February. They've also got Congolo. He's also out with injury. They've got Mario Lamina. I think he's also out with injury. The last time we played Fulham was almost two years ago. We're beating them 3 0 at Craven Cottage. Back in February 2019. Fulham are winless in their last 11 league meetings with us. We played Fulham back in the Cup quite a few years ago. Beating them 4-1. We also had that 2-2 game with them at Old Trafford back under the David Moyes era. Uh, I think that was the game where there was 81 crosses. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to make changes from the 0-0 draw with Liverpool. Um, I think he actually you know, might rest some key players. Um, I think Bay will be pushing for a start because Bay didn't play any part against Liverpool. Um, I think Alex Tellez will be pushing for a start because he didn't play any part against Liverpool. Uh, I think Donny van der Beek will be pushing for a start because, you know, he didn't play any part against Liverpool. Uh, Mason Greenwood also could start the game. Um, Edison Cavani could also start the game. Um, on my next video, I will be giving you my starting 11 prediction for this game. Don't forget, Bruno Fernandes, Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw are one booking away from a ban. So actually, that trio might be rested. We've obviously got the game against Liverpool at the weekend in the FA Cup fourth round. It'll be interesting to see how both teams approach that game. We are the second most successful team in FA Cup history because we have won 12 FA Cups. Liverpool, I think, have won around seven or eight, but Liverpool haven't won it since 2006. But yeah, our focus is on the Fulham game on Wednesday night. 
Uh, we drew our last game recently with Liverpool 0 0 at Anfield. Like I said, we was very, very good defensively against Liverpool. You know, Luke Shaw put a very, very good performance out. You know, he had Salah in his pocket. I like the way that Luke Shaw got forward. Um, Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof also did well at centre-half. Um, and wan -Bissaka also did well. We had two big chances in that game. Like I mentioned, you know, Paul Pobber had a fantastic chance. Produced a fantastic save from Allenson, but Paul Pobber should be scoring that. Bruno Fernandes had a fantastic chance again, produced a fantastic save from Allenson. Fernandes also had that effort from the three kick. So we had more clear-cut chances than Liverpool. You know, like I said, Liverpool did dominate the vast majority of the possession. That was expected. You know, Liverpool's best chance of the game was from Thiago. You know, it produced a fantastic save from David De Gea. Liverpool obviously had a few chances in the first half, but there obviously was wasteful. Solskjaer gave his perception on the 0-0 draw with Liverpool, like I mentioned. You know, he said he was disappointed. Because it was a missed opportunity to go six points clear of Liverpool. And he admits. We lacked. Composure. But. You know, we'd have been the happier team going away, going away with the draw than Liverpool. Because, you know, Liverpool haven't lost at Anfield in the Premier League since April 2017. So they are unbeaten now in, what, 68 Premier League games at Anfield. You know, Liverpool are in a bad vein of form at the moment. You know, Liverpool are winless in their last four league games. The first time since 2005, they have failed to score in three straight league games. But we still remain top by two points. You know, if City do win against Aston Villa, they will be top because they actually kick off before us. Like I updated you on my recent video, Jurgen Klopp criticised Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tactics. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp didn't like the way Ole Gunnar Solskjaer set you know, his team up. It was only a few weeks ago that you that Jurgen Klopp was moaning about, you know, the penalties that we get. You know, he says we get a penalty every three games, and he did mention that we've had more penalties in two years than, you know, he's had in five and a half years at Liverpool. But Solskjaer did hit back at Jurgen Klopp. You know, we haven't actually beaten Liverpool for, like, what, three years now. And, you know, we haven't beaten them at Anfield since 2016. But, yeah, uh, that game's irrelevant now. Uh, we've been absolutely exceptional away from home in the Premier League. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for almost a year. And we are unbeaten in our last 12 Premier League games. Man United do deserve a lot of credit for sticking with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because he could have easily been sacked. You know, he was lucky not to be sacked earlier on in the season when we got knocked out of the Champions League. You can say he was lucky not to be sacked after our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. You can say he was lucky not to be sacked, you know, at the first part of last season. So we have certainly endured bad periods under him. 
But, you know, with how good we have been in recent months, uh, a lot of United fans now do have a lot of faith in Solskjaer and a lot of United fans are Ollie in. Obviously, earlier on in the season, there was a lot of United fans that were Ollie out, reflecting how inconsistent we was. Like I've said, it, with how good we've been, you know, my perception has slowly started to change on him. It is a concern that we're not beating the big clubs and people say, you know, you must beat the big clubs to prove that you are genuine title contenders. But I don't think that really matters at the moment because, like I said, we still remain top and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the first manager to get us top at this stage of a season since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. And certainly Man United can win the Premier League. You know, if we do, it'll be our first Premier League title since 2013 and it'll be our 21st title overall. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has, has actually been playing mind games because prior to the game against Burnley, he did say, didn't he, that we must stay humble and not think we've cracked it if we go top. You know, he was saying after our 1-0 win against Wolves earlier on in the season that we're not in the title races yet, but if we are still challenging in March, he'll start to believe that we are in the title race. But, you know, if we don't win it this season, we'll win it at some point, definitely. You know, there's three trophies that we can pursue this season. We can win the Premier League, we can win the FA Cup and we can also win the Europa League. And it's very imperative that we get our first trophy on the board under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. You know, we haven't won a trophy now for just over four years. But reflecting now on Solskjaer has been at the club, like I've said on my recent videos, he's gained some managerial experience. You know, Man United is the third club in his managerial career. You know, before he was with us, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, and before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. And he did enjoy a very, very short tenure at Cardiff. He got sat some Cardiff because he ended up getting Cardiff relegated. So he hasn't got the that proven pedigree as a manager and he's not a manager at the top level but you know he, he could emulate into a top level manager at Man United you know if we do win the title this season he's definitely the long term manager for the club and I think he's learnt quite a bit since he's come in you know don't get me wrong there's still a few things he's got to learn on the job like I said to you a while ago you know Solskjaer needs to identify his best 11 needs to select his right select the right formation you know, his decision-making's got to be good persistently. His decision-making has been good in some games, to his credit, but there's been a lot of games where he has been tactically naive. And I did say, you know, that's one of the biggest concerns about Solskjaer. You know, this is Solskjaer's second full season as Man United manager. And I did say, didn't I, you know, this season was always going to be a big season for him. Do you think it would represent a good season for us if we won a trophy and finished third or second? Some United fans would say yeah and some United fans would say no. Solskjaer is going to be given at least another season at Man United. I think he's on course to earn himself a new contract at the club. Solskjaer is more than halfway through his three-year deal. Um, obviously, when he got the job permanently in March 2019, he did sign a three-year deal. You know, Solskjaer has been Manchester United manager for over two years now. We appointed him in, in December 2018 to replace Jose Mourinho. He's obviously give us an update. On our January transfer plans, like I've updated you, he's admitted that there could be further more departures from Man United in this January transfer window. Now, we recently saw Timothy Fossil-Mensa leave the club. He went to Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Solskjaer has confirmed that Sergio Romero and 
Marcus Rojo are free to leave the club in this January window because he said their contracts won't be extended. Will Phil Jones leave in this January window? If he doesn't leave this month, he'll leave in the summer. Uh, you know the news on Lingard? Apparently Solskjaer's in a disagreement with Jesse Lingard's future. It recently said that Ling uh, Solskjaer actually wants Lingard to stay this month. Oh, he's been subjected to some transfer speculation, hasn't he? Um, I think Agarlo will leave. Um, Agarlo's loan expires at the end of this month. Uh, Daniel James, you know, there has been rumours of him going out on loan because he's lost his place in the team and there's also been rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan because he's our third choice left back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. And I think more players will leave Manchester United in the summer. <laughs> um, I think Paul Pogba could leave Man United in the summer transfer window. It's not a sure they will. Uh, Fabrizio Romano, who's a very reliable Italian journalist, he recently said that Paul Pogba will leave, providing that an agreement is reached. And Fabrizio Romano has said that Juventus are preparing to make a move for him in the summer. And Juventus are, are hoping we are more open to a player plus cash deal. Now, don't forget Juventus offered us Aaron Ramsey as part of a swap deal for Pogba. We rejected it. They also offered us Douglas Costa as part of a swap deal for Pogba. We rejected that, but... It did mention that we are interested in an exchange deal. Paul Pobber did endure four good years with Juventus. But he had only been linked with a return to Juventus. You know, PSG have been uh, actually the latest team to be in for him. Uh, Pob Paul Pobber's agent, Minio Riola, was recently talking with PSG and... He actually said that Mauricio Pochettino has identified Paul Pogba as his number one target. Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with him and Barcelona and Inter Milan have been in for him before. I think we have revealed our asking price for Pogba. We want £75 million. But like I said, if he leaves, it will be in the summer. It won't be in this January transfer window. Paul Pobba did play against Liverpool. Don't forget, you know, he was in more of an advanced role. And to, to be fair, he did very, very well in that position. Maybe Solskjaer now will consider him playing, in, playing him in that position regularly. You know, he actually was on the right-hand side, wasn't he? Paul Pobba against Liverpool. Since he's come back from the ankle injury, like I said, he's done uh, very, very well. Because uh, Paul probably did have an ankle injury earlier on in the season and he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury and had a minor injury not so long ago. Don't forget Sol uh, Paul probably gave an interview uh, prior to the game against Liverpool and he did say that we're not on Liverpool's level as yet but he says we can win the Premier League title and he was talking about his frustration of uh, obviously being on the bench. Now, Paul Pobber's agent, Minio Riola, told 2 Sport last month, you know, you know, his client's career at Man United is over. He said he's unhappy and he has to leave and he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. And obviously Solskjaer was furious with Minio Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. Don't forget, earlier on in the season, we triggered that one-year extension on Paul Popper's contract, so he's under contract with the football club until June 2022. As it stands at the moment, Popper's our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. You know, don't forget during the last international break, like I updated you on, he made quite a few comments saying like this season has been the most difficult period in his career. He was saying like playing for France is a breath of fresh air. 
and in general he was talking about his Man United struggles this season, but reflect on them comments, he did receive a lot of criticism and Didier De Jomps, the France manager, was talking a lot about him. Uh, yeah, Matic, you know, could he be sold in the summer? Because he's not one of our first choice midfielders, but he's actually ahead of Donny van der Beek, surprisingly. You know, could Juan Mata be also sold in the summer? Don't forget, earlier on this season, Juan Mata rejected an 18 million year contract offered to play in Sergio Arabia. Uh, it was an unnamed Sergio Arabian club. Mata's had a good career at Man United. He's been at the club now, is it, over six years? Got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2014. The element of concern about Matter is that obviously he's lost that yard of pace and he's, what, 33, 34 now. Doesn't get in the team a lot now, but he has actually played quite a few games this season. But there's also a lot of players that we are going to keep at the club. Uh, don't forget Solskjaer said that January signings are unlikely. You know... Despite him saying that, could we still make a signing in this window, you know, before it shuts? It's not long now until the January transfer window shuts. You know, there has been a lot of players on our agenda, you know. This January transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as Man United manager. And obviously, Ed Woodward has already promised that he will back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think all the transfer windows he's endured so far he's been let down as Ollie. Uh, but Woodward did say towards the end of last year that we will back Solskjaer with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. But despite our reluctance to back Solskjaer, you know, I still think he has made good signings as Man United manager. He spent over £200 million at the club. Obviously in the summer of 2019 he brought James... Osaka and Harry Maguire in. In January of last year, he brought Bruno Fernandes in and Odina Gallo in on loan. And in the summer transfer window of last year, he brought Donny van der Beek in, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Facundo Pellistri, and Ahmad Dilo Traore. Um, Ahmad Dilo Traore obviously joined earlier on this month. So you, you can probably say he counts as a January signing because it was official earlier on this month, but we actually agreed to get him uh, last October, didn't we? A mad dialo triore. <clears throat> but like I've said to you, know, the board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years. Don't forget, um, Solskjaer got us to the EFL Cup semi-final this season. Obviously, we lost it to Manchester City 2-0. That was disappointing. But City are a very, very good team. You know, they're back in the title race now. And they're very, very good in the EFL Cup, especially because they have won it for the last three seasons. And they have reached their fourth consecutive League Cup final of City. They'll probably win it again, to be honest with you. You know, Solskjaer did well last season in his first full season. Scores qualification for the Champions League, got us third and he guided us to three semi-finals. So these are certainly positives to take. No one thought we'd have been top of the league mid midway through January 2021 and you wouldn't have even thought we'd have been joint top of the Premier League um, earlier on this month. But it just shows you that a few, results do a few good results do change the complexion of things. Um, a lot of people are saying it's a strange league this season. You know, we can win it. Liverpool can still win it. City can win it. Tottenham could even win it. Leicester could win it. You know, there's only, a, what, a, f a few points uh, separating, like, what, first to sixth or seventh. That's how strange the league has been so far this season. But, you know, obviously with no fans in football grounds, you know, it's not the same and it's obviously having a, impact on the players isn't it there's actually been quite a lot of high scoring games this season but like I say should be beating Fulham um, should be winning our next league game after Fulham as well because after Fulham in the league next it's Sheffield United and obviously their relegation for the bottom of the league obviously they are going down this season Sheffield United have only won one game this season they recently got that first win 
after Sheffield, it's Arsenal away at the Emirates. Uh, that's going to be a pretty tough game because Arsenal have rejuvenated themselves in uh, the last few weeks. Um, obviously, earlier on in the season, Arsenal were facing a relegation battle because they were sitting 15th and a lot of Arsenal fans were demanding Mikel Arteta out. And I think after Arsenal, it's is it Southampton, uh, then it's Everton. So yeah, games are coming up thick and fast for Manchester United. But like I say, we've got some very, very good players in our team. You know, you've got Rashford, that's good. You've got Cavani, that's enjoyed the fantastic start to his Man United career. You know, you've got Mason Greenwood, that's good when he plays. He hasn't played a lot though this season, to be fair, but Solskjaer's been defending him a lot this season. You've got Fernandez, that's world clash. You've got Van der Beek, that plays well when he does play. I think we just need to play him more often. You know, Pob has done well recently. You know, Martial can be good when he wants to be. Hasn't proven that a lot though this season because he hasn't been that clinical enough in front of goal. You know, you've got Fred, that's good when he wants to be. He's enjoyed good games this season. But Tom Way can be good when he wants to be. You know, Luke Shaw's really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Surprisingly, still remains our first choice left back. I thought he'd have dropped his second choice left back when Telez come in. Telez hasn't really played a lot, has he? He's played, but not as much as I expected him to. But there again, at one point, Alex Telez did have COVID. Um, I've been very impressed with Harry Maguire in games this season. He's rejuvenated himself because he did have early season troubles, but I still don't think Harry Maguire was worth the 80 odd, the £80 million pounds that we got him for. You know, he's the most expensive centre half in the world at the moment. I've been very impressed with Eric Bay since he started playing again. Bay needs to stay in the team. I think he needs to stay there ahead of Lindelof. I know Lindelof started against Liverpool and Bay didn't start, but I think Bay's just a better centre half than Lindelof. But like I say, Bay's injury prone. Han Wan Bissaka's impressed me, but we've obviously got concerns about his lack of attacking intent and his distribution and David De Gea, you know, he's definitely getting back to his best. David De Gea's been a long servant. This is David De Gea's 10th season at Manchester United. He has been a long servant. And I said he's going to remain our number one for at least this season. Dean Henderson, um, he's, he's done well in games when he has played this season. So we have got a good team there. But do you think it's a title winning team? The squad's good enough to at least finish in the top four, the top three. Solskjaer's actually said we do need to make more signings if we are to, you know, to be genuine title contenders. We're looking to make around four signings, I think, this year to complete our squad over Hall. But like I say, which players are Man United going to get? You know, there's a lot of players on our agenda. Grealish is on our agenda. Sancho's on our agenda. You know, Ramos, not so long ago, was on our agenda. That Max Aarons, towards the end of last year, was on our agenda. Declan Rice is now back on our agenda. But he did say towards the end of last year that Solskjaer made a new centre-back his number one transfer priority. Bay and Maguire do go well together in that back line. It's better than Lindelof alongside Maguire, but like I said, Bay's too injury-prone, so that means in that aspect he's not reliable enough, is he? Yeah. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop me comments, likes below on the channel. If you do consider subscribe as always and take care, God bless and I'll see you all again very very soon.